Welcome back to KCDC. With the clock ticking, the president tells the New York Times that negotiations in Congress are a, quote, waste of time and indicated he'll most likely declare a national emergency to secure funding for a border wall. Meanwhile, the Washington Post reports that Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell personally warned the president and voiced concern that that could force Republicans to pass a resolution expressing their disapproval. Joining me now, Republican Congressman Tom Cole of Oklahoma. Congressman, thanks so much uh, for being Great here. To be with you. What's your response to the president saying that this is a waste of time? Helpful? Well, it's not. Frankly, you've got a group of very skilled legislators in there that have reached agreement over the years, time and time again. And look, I have a lot of confidence in uh, Chairman Shelby and Senator Leahy. I have a lot of confidence in uh, Representative Lowy, the chairman of the House Appropriations Committee, and her Republican counterpart, Kay Granger. So uh, let them run the negotiation. Number one, they'll bring you back billions of dollars more than you had in the original bill. Number two, they'll find some way to split the difference in the wall, no wall debate, which has really been pretty obscure. And, and number three, they'll uh, set the table to get the rest of the government uh, funded permanently through the rest of fiscal year. So, again, let the legislators do their work. Are you confident that Nancy Pelosi will be willing to sign on to whatever this compromise is that the committee comes up with? She did say no money for the wall. That seemed like a line in the sand. I, I'm not confident, and that worries me. I think the, the biggest obstacle to the negotiations is not the people in the room. It's the people outside the room that are playing a political game. that are trying to determine who the winner and the loser is, rather than just come to a deal that uh, everybody can be a winner is. So uh, when you've got uh, people as powerful as the president and the speaker laying down lines without, frankly, always knowing the details of the negotiation, I think you run a big risk. So uh, we need to get out of this game of political chicken between two really important and powerful people. And again, let the appropriators who know the subject, who are pretty good at splitting the difference, go about their work. There's discussion, uh, as we mentioned, of a potential resolution disapproving of a national emergency on the border that would come out of the House of Representatives and potentially force the Senate to take a tough vote. How would you vote on such a resolution? Well, look, I think would you vote to disapprove? I, I, I think there is an emergency on the border. Look, I agree with what the president's trying to do. I don't always agree with the way he's trying to do it. Uh, we're apprehending 60,000 people a month along the border. Uh, that's actually up from recent years, although down from from uh, the worst of the period in the early uh, 2000s. So, but how would you vote on the resolution? Well, let's wait and see how the resolution is worded. I haven't seen it. I never, never take that. But uh, I do think there's an emergency on national border. I don't have a problem voting for an emergency. The real question is, so you I don't think that this would be an unconstitutional move for the president to declare a national emergency well, on the border? I think the courts will decide that. that. I think it's a, it's an unwelcome precedent. Uh, look, I think uh, declaring emergencies where you're going to immediately go to court is going to be litigated for months where it's not immediately obvious to everybody in America is a high-risk proposition. And I would rather, you know, try to come to a deal. Look, at the end of the day, the president's going to get billions of dollars more than, frankly, either he asked for or Congress originally voted. That's going to go for more border agents. That's going to go for more containment facilities. That's going to go for more judges. That's going to go for more censors. It's all going to make the border surf, uh, safer. And he will have done more on the border than anybody else. Will he get everything he wants? Probably not. That's the nature of a negotiation. Now, would I like him to get everything he wants? Sure. But uh, again, we don't have the votes for that in the House. And frankly, we've never had the votes in the Senate. We can't get to 60 there. Uh, so let's work within the framework that we have and, and frankly, make sure that the government is open and operational. I don't mind the president keeping things on the table. I think he's wise to do that as a negotiator. But the end here ought to be a deal that we can both celebrate, not a deal where we point fingers at one another and try to determine who the winner and loser is. The president's approval ratings in the wake of the shutdown have dropped to some of the lowest of his presidency. Are you concerned about the fundamentals uh, of his favorable ratings heading into 2020? Do you think that there might be a legitimate Republican challenge? No, I don't think there'll be a legitimate Republican challenge. I think the president uh, has maintained his hold within the Republican electorate uh, very well. I think most Republicans agree with him about their concern on the border and are supportive of it. On 
the other hand, I think, you know, you win politics by addition, not uh, subtraction and division. So you need to reach out to some people who didn't vote for you. You didn't win a majority of the votes last time. At some point, you need to start adding people uh, to your side as opposed to just holding on to what you've got. I think the president's got a great opportunity to do that in the State of the Union address on Tuesday, and uh, I'm hopeful that he'll, he'll take that. Certainly, there's some pretty encouraging signs coming out of the White House on that score. Finally, I realize uh, you are, of course, not from the state of Virginia, but clearly this has become national news. Ralph Northam, uh, first saying, apologizing for appearing in an extraordinarily racist photograph, then a day later saying he didn't appear in it, insisting at this point he's not going to resign. Do you think Ralph Northam should resign? Well, let me start by saying, look, I'm not from Virginia. I'm not a Democrat. I certainly would have voted for the governor had I been. So that ought to be taken into context. Look, if I were him, I would ask myself three questions. The first question would be, if I stay, can I help in the healing process? I think the answer to that is clearly no. I think leaving will help the healing process. And the second is, can I be effective if I stay? I think the answer there, again, is clearly no. His own party has deserted him. Republicans will not support him. I think he'll be almost a pariah when it comes to things like recruiting industry into Virginia. And the third one is, do I have a capable replacement? And he clearly does, and one that probably do a better job of healing in this wake. So he shouldn't leave the public arena. Look, Richard Nixon didn't leave the public arena, but he knew when he needed to go. And then he wrote books and he participated in conversation. He rehabilitated himself. That would be my recommendation to the governor. Leave, uh, but don't leave the debate. Talk about what happened. Uh, I think he could bring something to it. But if he stays as governor, uh, I, I don't see how that's good for the people of Virginia. I don't think that's good for the national dialogue on race. So personal opinion, he ought to go. All right, Congressman Tom Cole, thank you very much for being here today.